In this video of this series on the marketing in the business planning process, we'll talk about how you actually gather market data, what it takes to be gathering the data that you need and to specify what your customers are looking for, what sorts of products they want, the features and functions and the like that they're necessary when gathering a product. We'll talk about them first. We'll talk about here what happens when you have a known product, known market, people kind of are comfortable with the products and the services being offered. And then we'll talk about when things are a little bit newer for an invention or something different. First of all, in a known market, whenever you're trying to identify what to find in a known market, in a new, in an existing market and maybe launch a product that has some different features or functions, typically you'll use traditional market research methods. And that's two types of things surveys and focus groups. Surveys are what you typically would see when somebody stops you in the mall or whatever and starts to ask you five or six questions, or you get a phone call or whatever. Um, they, you might be able to gather data about a particular product. Say you're buying a new iPhone or an iPad. Someone might ask you questions about how often you use it, where you carry it, what colors you like, uh, what sort of weight is too much or too little. They might ask you about how many, uh, how much data usage you have, the different ways you might use it. They might ask you what your friends have, things like that. That's survey research where you're getting specific data. Notice that there is a physical product or there's a market that questions can be asked about, that people are comfortable, they know what you're saying, there's no confusion about what the particular product or service is. The other main traditional method is focus groups. This is when you want to get a little more behind the data and understand how people are reacting. What you'll typically do in a focus group, and this is generally all outsourced, although you can do informal focus groups yourself. There are small companies all over the place that do that specialize in market research, which typically means surveys and um, focus groups. And they'll have their own room or whatever. It's a location that's un, un, unmarked or on indescript, and they'll they have certain people they contact and they bring them in and they have a similar demographic like you might want men between the ages of uh, 18 and 22 that like certain kinds of music and address in a certain way or have certain sorts of, um, of job or economic uh, and economic placement the kinds of work they do or the families they're from and you'll get them all in a room uh, typically uh, 15 uh, 12 to 20 something like that and with a professional facilitator who will ask them questions in a very objective sense. You don't want anyone reacting or telegraphing what the quote right answer is because in a personal interpersonal situation like that, oftentimes people are influenced by what the people want. They think the questioner wants to hear. So that's one reason you hire a third party. And typically if you do that, you will be, be you might be behind a glass screen and watch the session or it might be videotaped or whatever everyone agrees to this and then you can watch people think about and process questions about what would you how would you choose between two different products one product that weighed a little bit more but had maybe a little bit different uh, a stronger uh, um, uh, it was more resilient if you dropped it you know which would you want more and people will weigh that and discuss it and talk about it um, and, and there'll be some, you know, you're sort of getting behind what thought process is leading individuals to make the choices and have the attributes or attitudes that they have. That's what focus groups are good for. If you notice, there's only, you know, 15 people maybe. That's not really a statistical sample. So you can't really make any conclusions from a focus group, but you could certainly learn what makes people tick. So generally, surveys and focus groups are used in complementary fashion where the survey, you can ask thousands of people or hundreds of people and get a statistical sample that people will buy this product, right? But you don't really know what's behind those decisions. And focus groups can help you understand that. And then maybe you can add a few more questions to the survey and get a real good statistical sample that'll tell you that this extra, this extra ounce of weight matters a lot to people. You might not have expected it, but it does. And you could identify that in a focus group and the reasons why, and then you won't make sense, and then you can ask questions, and indeed you find that maybe in a statistical sample those situations occur. So if you'll notice, there's something that they're reacting to that people can respond intelligently about, and that's what focus groups and research surveys and those sorts of things are really good with existing products. 
But what if you've invented something that nobody has ever seen before and they can't really imagine it? You can't even really build a prototype of it or they've never really used it in their life. They, they have a problem and this might help them with their problem, but they've never really used it. This is when you have to start to look at different ways of assessing possible market response. Here you talk to people that understand the marketplace, they see trends. The people that do focus group facilitation understand what makes people tick behind the scenes and they may be able to give you a perspective on the kinds of products or services that people seem to respond to in a particular industry. It might be health, food or whatever and they may be able to help you with that. You might also come up with scenarios like written scenarios. What if a product did this and this and this and this and you draw it up or you do a prototype and use that in a focus group to have people react to, uh, to that sort of scenario even though it's a, kind of a made up thing. People have to be internalized and think about what it is exactly this product might do for them and you get data, it's a lot, it's not as uh, uh, reliable, if you will, as survey and focus group data on existing products because you're not really sure they understand what the product that you're going to offer is. In fact, you might not even quite understand precisely what the product or you're offering is. So you, um, you have to take a lot of risk. And this is one reason in this kind of arena where it's innovation, people generally launch a new product or prototype and then they get responses and react and they might make it lighter, they might make it sleeker, they might make it better looking, they might make it um, even less functional if it provides some other feature that people like. Right? In the arena of developing new products, it's typically you put something out there, you get reaction. You put something out there, you get reaction. Um, these are the alpha, pro alpha trials, beta trials, even like smartphones that Apple does, they do these secret uh, beta trials and the like that people sign up and use it and they get feedback. And, and, and that sort of process, it's much more difficult than, than an existing product. Even beyond that, sometimes you're trying to develop some entirely new market or some new solution that you don't even know for sure there's going to be a consumer uh, product or a consumer problem or a business problem that you can sa solve or that you can do something about. Here you, you spend time in more, um, exploratory modes and talk to people through structured interviews. You might do what's called an anthropological expedition, which say you want to sell to people that eat only very healthy food. You might go and actually sort of live with a group like that. Go and you go to a health food store, you find people and you, you sort of walk around with them. You try to emulate their behaviors. You under, try to understand what about their lifestyle and their, their sensibilities is causing them to go and purchase all their food in a certain way. So you can then support that particular lifestyle or that the problems that they might be facing with a new product or product family. Um, this is, uh, again, as you move up the scale of newness, it becomes more difficult, more ambiguous and riskier to develop these products. But you can't just ask people, most people, would, if you ever asked them if they wanted a tablet computer, before Apple launched their tablet, they would have said no because they were launched in the past and they failed. But Apple did a good job of this kind of work and understanding the, the sorts of technologists and the sorts of uh, people of your generation that are much more comfortable with using touchscreen technology and the like. So the whole idea of gathering data is this spectrum or this continuum from if you know what your product's gonna look like, you can ask people directly but if they don't know what you're selling and you can't really be sure what you're communicating to them, you have to start getting a little more in depth, make some more assumptions, try things out, get them to react, and then make your changes. And that's what the data is all about. Of course, you gather all the data. Um, once you get a prototype that works, you might try a focus group. Um, you might launch a product to a, to a small group like a beta group, and then you can do surveys. So you can mix these things as well. But it's important to note that they have different uses and the newer your product, the newer your idea, the harder it is to get really, really good, solid market research data. You still have to do everything you can. It just gets harder. In the next lecture uh, in this series on the markets, we're going to talk about the advantages we have as entrepreneurs in this sector and the disadvantages that we have. 
Um, it's similar to the opportunity discussions, discussions about which opportunities help existing, existing companies versus entrepreneurs. But in the marketing area, it's, it's much more specific. And we'll talk about that at our very next lecture.